kilometers. That was a complex movement of the priests there. I felt like um, one of those football coaches when they, they call the flea flicker play and they just cross your fingers that nobody runs into anybody and causes a problem. Good morning and welcome to Reno Buddhist Center. I apologize for reminding you that you're missing the football game today. Um, <laughs> we are very happy you decided to come here and be with us. Um, and a special welcome goes to all visitors and new folk. I, is my mic on? Does it seem like you can hear me in the back? Okay, good. Um, visitors and newcomers to RBC are always very welcome. And thanks to you at home for tuning in to our stream and sharing this time together. We begin with our Shoshinge, a chant and incense offering for those of you who are new to the temple, the Shoshinge is chanted uh, in this book that you find in the seat back pocket in front of you. Um, and the book opens in this way, so you have to be kind of aware of what's going on here. We chant in vertical columns thusly. I guess that's right to left, but I'm looking at the book upside down and backwards, so figure it out. Most important. We, we want to chant and feel the positive energy, energy generated by chanting. It's a core practice of our tradition. Shonan Shonin, our founder, uh, wrote the Shoshenge more than 800 years ago. And in it, the Shoshenge compresses his experiences and insights in practicing Pure Land Buddhism into one beautiful poem. He is certainly here with us today. Shinran wants us to know that life is more than a simple journey from cradle to grave. We are part of a long, unbroken thread of life that extends deep into the past, and we are responsible to extend that thread onward into the future. The, the incense offering, I should mention a few things. While we are chanting the Shoshinge, everyone is welcome to come and offer incense. This is a gift in gratitude to the wisdom and compassion of the universe, to Amida Buddha. Um, we have two other altars as well as the Oshoko altar, and uh, this altar here on the north side is to the Medicine Buddha, so if someone you know or yourself needs particular healing energy, that is an appropriate place to offer incense. And then on this other, on the south side, we have a, an altar to Kanon Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva of Compassion. So there's other options as well to express gratitude to the universe for our life and uh, our experience of it. Here on the altar is Amida Buddha offering boundless wisdom and compassion to us all. 
please offer your incense with an open heart and deep gratitude to all your teachers.
ニューションジオジオゲホンジドンランヨテンシジョコランショボサライパンゾルシジュジョキョボンショセンギョキラクホケンジンボサロンシュゲホードインガケンセガンホーゲンエコユタリキショジョシンギュイシンジンワクゼンボンブシンジンホーショチショジソクネハンイシブリョコミョドショウシュジョカイフケドシャケショドナンショユイミョジョドカツニュ万全自力変言集、円満特語感染症、三不三心軽音言、ゾウマホメイド非因、衣装ゾウワクチグゼイ、シアンギョーカイショーミョーカー全道読妙部署員、
Dharma School with Will and Aaron. Let's sing them out with Let the Buddha Walk with You. Let the Buddha walk with you. Let the Buddha walk with you. Let the Buddha walk, just walk. Let the Buddha walk with you. Let the 
Buddha walk with you. Let the Buddha walk with you. Let the Buddha walk. Just walk. Let the Buddha walk with you. Let the Buddha walk with you. Good job, everyone. <laughs> Very pleasant. The reading today is the Kula Karma Vibhanga Sutra, the shorter explanation of karma. Thus I have heard. Once, when the Buddha was living in Savati in Jetta's Grove, Nanatapindika's monastery, Subha, a Brahmin son of Todaya, went to the Buddha to ask him a question. He greeted the Buddha, and when courteous talk was finished, he sat down to one side. Subha asked the Buddha, Master Gotama, why does inferiority and superiority exist among human beings? One person has a short life and another a long one. Some sickly, some healthy, some ugly, some beautiful. Some people are stupid and some are wise. Why do these different di differences happen? Subha, beings are owners of their actions heirs to their actions. They have actions as their parents, actions as their kin, actions as their home place. It is actions that differentiate beings according to quality. I do not understand your meaning, Master. Please tell me the Dharma so that I might understand your meaning in detail. The Buddha responded, then listen. Subha, and heed well what I say. In one case, someone is a killer of living beings, murderous, bloody-handed, given to blows and violence, merciless, due to having performed such actions on the dissolution of their body after death, he reappears in a state of deprivation, in an unhappy destination, hell. If he comes to a human birth, he is short of life, wherever that is. This is the karma that leads to short life. But then someone abstains from killing living beings, lies aside, lays aside the bludgeon and the knife, is considerate and merciful, dwelling compassionately for the welfare of all beings. Due to such intentional actions, such karma, after death, he may be reborn in a happy destination in a heavenly world, or if human birth occurs, his life will be long. This is the karma that leads to long life, dwelling compassionately with the welfare of other living beings at heart. And then, Subha, someone who harms others uh, uh, with fists or sticks or knives. Due to this action, after death, he reappears in deprivation, or reborn in human, the human realm, he is sickly. These are the karmic actions that lead to sickness. But then, someone who does not harm others, when they come to rebirth, they are healthy. This is the way that leads to health. And if someone is angry, given to rage, even for little cause, they are furious and always resentful. But these actions after death, they reappear by these actions, they reappear in deprivation. If born human, they are ugly. These are the actions that lead to ugliness. But then, some woman or man, if, if, who is not often angry or given to rage, even when much is said, never furious, not ill-disposed or ill-tempered, due to such actions of body, speech, and mind, after death, they are reborn in a happy destination. Or if reborn human, they are beautiful. This is the way that leads to beauty. And then, Subha, someone who is envious, begrudges and harbors envy about others' gains and honors. Due to these actions, his next birth, he is insignificant where he is reborn. This is the karma leading to insignificance. But then, someone else is not envious. They do not begrudge or harbor uh, envy about others' gains or honors. They celebrate and respect 
salutations and offerings others receive. Such actions, when they are reborn, they become an influential person. That is what leads to influence. Not being generous leads to poverty. But giving of food, clothing, sandals, medicines, a bed, roof, candles to monks and Brahmins leads to a happy destination and wealth in a coming life. If someone is obdurate and haughty, does not pay homage to the wise, they are reborn in low station. But one who pays homage to those whom we should pay homage to, whom, whom, uh, respects those who should be respected, they are reborn in high station. One who does not ask important questions of the wise when they can, they are reborn with dull wit. But someone who asks penetrating questions of the wise, like what is a wholesome life, or what should be cultivated, or what actions result in harm and suffering, these are reborn with wisdom. The Buddha continued for some time, and when he was done, he summed up his in this way. So, Supa, this is how beings are owners of their actions, heirs to their actions. They have actions as their parents, actions as their kin, actions as their home place. It is the karma of our actions that differentiates beings according to quality or lesser quality. When this was said, Subha said to the Buddha, Magnificent, Master Gotama, magnificent. The Dharma has been made clear to me in many ways, as though you had turned things right, revealed the hidden, showed the way to the lost. It is a lamp in the darkness. Subha immediately took refuge. I go to the Master Gotama for refuge, and to the Dharma and to the Sangha. From today onward, let Master Gotama accept me as a student who has gone to him for refuge for all his life. Bell. We will now have a few minutes of meditation accompanied by a song from Peter Gabriel and Kate Bush.
tissue box around now. I think that was the Dharma talk. <laughs> okay, let's all have a good cry together. Okay. It's powerful. Dharma talk seems to have disappeared from that. <laughs> like I said, I think that was the Dharma talk. Hmm. I had it up. Okay. <laughs> Technology's not, not my thing. Okay. Yeah. So. I am so happy to be here with you today. I don't think I'm going to make it. I am happy <laughs> to be here with all of my relatives. That's how our friend Brian Melendez talked to us at the New Year's Eve service for all our relatives. And it's so fitting. If you are a newer or a longtime member, you are, you are our dear relatives. That's how we feel. Brothers and sisters in the Dharma. Last Sunday, we celebrated our... God. <laughs> you were worried about Reverend Matthew not being able to make it. I don't know. We celebrated our wonderful grandfather, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at a gathering of the Nevada Faith Nevada Interfaith Association. We had a memorial service celebration for him. Some of you may have even seen Reverend Matthew on TV. Did you? <laughs> I thought about talking about karma at that gathering. So that's why we we're talking about karma today. It just seemed appropriate. It is important to generate karma with skillful discernment, like Reverend King did. He had great energy from his faith. We can recognize that perseverance in our actions is essential. We call that perseverance virya in Sanskrit. It means energy or vitality, persistence. We came together at the McKinley Center to celebrate Reverend Martin Luther King and his strength of endeavor. A champion and a martyr in a righteous quest for all Americans. A quest for justice, for equal justice under the law. He showed us that anyone can succeed in America with faith, hope, and unshakable resolve. It was a day commemorating the beauty of Reverend King's vision, a vision of all Americans living together in harmony and his unshakable nonviolent persistence in the face of the worst. People can throw at each other. We can persist. And we shared a meditation song from Peter Gabriel, Don't Give Up. I have listened to this song since I was in college. Deep down, it feels very emotional because we all try so hard and often don't feel like we are making progress. But Reverend King must have had and must have felt like that as well. He had days where he probably did feel that way, certainly when he was arrested or faced confrontation or the bombing of his own home. It is a terrible list, and yet he kept standing up for all people and their right to be together in friendship. I said this had to do with karma. So from the reading, we learned, what is karma? Karma means action, actions of body, speech, and mind. All actions plant seeds in our karmic consciousness. Seeds that bear fruit in our life. Actions establish habit energy that direct our life 
one way or the other. By our actions, actions of body, speech, and mind, we intentionally plant these seeds, and they determine our character. Developing our character is important, and that is why karma is important. Remember the most famous quote from Dr. King? I have a dream that my four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. By the content of our character is our karma. Now we don't judge people based on karma. It is its own reward. The meditation song is a duet, Peter and Kate. Peter is contemplating giving up, and Kate, the voice of Kanon, Bodhisattva, the Bodhisattva of compassion, tells him, don't give up. In her voice, the song eloquently and simply lists all the reasons we need you to persevere. She starts with, don't give up. We don't need much of anything. This is a fundamental Buddhist truth. It is actually the wanting of much of everything that causes us to suffer. As the Dalai Lama said, we have everything we need to be happy. Each day, in every possible situation, the ingredients for happiness are present. If we let go the wanting much of anything, we can keep trying and ease off on the karma of wanting. Keep learning and keep growing. We continue on our karmic path. She goes on, don't give up because you have friends. An important part of our karma is our community. The sangha we live in. If it is prone to unskillful and harmful actions, then we are going to be taken into that river's flow. If we associate with people of quality and good character, we will be okay. Reverend King had strong friends who supported his actions. And we care for you as we care for your friends. You need to remember that. She says, don't give up. You're not the only one. How alone do you feel? In our world now, there are more lonely people than there have ever been. It is hard to feel alone. But you are not the only one. You are not the only one that struggles. It's normal to struggle. Our spiritual growth is based in that struggle and knowing that you are not the only one. And that eases the stress and the strain of it all. She says, don't give up. No reason to be ashamed. Shame and self-criticism affects us all. It is a two-sided leaf. On the one side, it is painful to feel like we have not lived up to who we should be, not lived up to the expectations of our parents or ourselves, they want the best for us, and they want for us to be our best selves. Burdened with this, we can easily feel ashamed. Let's reflect on Reverend King here. He certainly felt responsible for the injuries that protesters suffered in marches that he organized. He felt shame for putting people at risk, for not defending his family against the bomber. But he turned the leaf over and use that feeling of not quite right yet to spur him into action. By reflecting on bad karma, we turn shame into a motivator to do better, into wisdom to not give up, to keep pursuing skillful action. She says, don't give up. You still have us. This feels like family. Those close people who we live with and who support us through the difficult trials of life. If we give up, it deeply affects them. 
And though you may experience losses of a job, of a dear one, or some dignity, even so, you still have us. We mustn't lose sight of that. When one loss makes us feel inadequate, we mustn't lose sight of what we do have. In Reverend King's speech, it is his dream for his children that drives him forward in nonviolent action. She says, don't give up. We're proud of who you are. Every one of us has an amazing story. When we read it back to ourselves, it usually is not so amazing. It's usually punctuated with some disappointment or some failure. But in the eyes of our dear ones, the truth lives. They can see past your internal struggle and see that you have made it this far. You have done good. As and when the opportunity was present, she says, don't give up. No, it's never been easy. Living human life has never been easy. All of us have struggles. We experience ease, fullness sometimes. But living life and skillfully navigating its choices and challenges, that's never easy. A fun paradox, if we don't expect it to be easy, it is easier. We are less shocked when the tire flattens or when a friend ghosts us or a dear one passes. It never was easy, but it's good. As the song goes, we are then treated to the refrain, rest your head, you worry too much, it's going to be all right. When times get rough, you can fall back on us. Don't give up. Please don't give up. You are okay just as you are. That is the view of Amida Buddha. Amida can see the good in you and the karmic potential in you. A Buddha to be. Maybe a little rough right now, but it is in you. It's in all of us. Reassured that it's going to be all right. If you ease off on the struggling, you can rest your head and regroup, re-energize. In this case, there were times when, in his case, there were times when Reverend King rested, contemplated, and considered his best course of action. You worry too much. It is our nature to think and mull over things too much. To cogitate and chew on things, to review and judge our actions, our karma. What if this, and then what if that? It is a curse of our sentience. We can use language to, to deliberate and judge, to seek wisdom. But it can be too much. The Buddha offers a middle way. Don't overdo it. Whatever it may be, not too much, not too little, just right in his way. So worrying too much is not very helpful. And it leads to selfish judgments and robs us of our spark to act. It leads to paralysis by analysis. Clear and decisive action. Skillful and well-timed action. It is what the Buddha taught. Worrying too much was not on his list of qualities to be cultivated. You clearly worry too much. It is a simple fact. The song culminates with Kate reassuring Peter, don't give up. Because I believe there's a place, there's a place where we belong. Throughout our spiritual journey, it is essential to believe, to have a deep and abiding faith that there is a place where we belong. Right here. Right here. 
spiritual home, either out there or in here. We're in tune with the wisdom and compassion of the universe. We may not be there yet, and we may not even be close, but knowing just makes all the difference. And seeing you all here just makes all the difference. It makes it possible to endure and persevere and continue in the face of all these challenges that we have right now. The Sukhavati is the place where we belong. The Buddha field of Amida generated through kalpas of arduous practice where all the struggles and errors of his life are absent. Where we can clearly and completely understand the dharma of the Buddha. It's really there. It's here for all of us. This is one of Reverend King's greatest strengths while he was a Christian minister, I greatly admire his faith, his resolute belief in the loving nature of his God. This bare goodness, this deep knowing gave him great strength to face the many, many adversities. And it gave him great joy in times of sharing and togetherness. In the same way, our faith in Amida Buddha in the Pure Land of infinite possibilities that he manifested can bring us strength. It can energize us to persevere through the challenges. There are many, many challenges, but we can have faith in that infinite wisdom and compassion. It can call us to act, to engage in skillful karma actions that are compassionate and wise and benefit all beings with their fruit. None of us is a luminary like Reverend King, but we can each do our part to bring his vision of equality to all people into being. We can recognize that the energy of perseverance in our actions is essential. Virya, energy, vitality, is so important, so evident in Reverend King's short life. I will say to each of you, wherever you are in your life's journey, don't give up. Please, please don't give up. To finish, let's offer a blessing to Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Wherever he is now, please say after me, may you be happy. May you be happy. May you receive boundless compassion. May you be free from harm. And may peace and harmony fill your heart. We will now have our closing song, Home in the Meadow, that you will find in your chanting books on page 49. <laughs>
thank you all so much. We have tea time downstairs where there is newcomer circle and you can meet and if you have questions about the Dharma, please come share or just listen. And we have tea time and sangha time to sit with our sangha friends and talk about the Dharma talk. Talk about anything you want. Just being together is very important. And we have uh, Buddhism 101 classes coming up in February, so you are welcome. People of all stages in your Buddhist path are welcome. You don't have to be just a beginner to come and enjoy these classes. And anything I've forgotten? Okay. Thank you so very much. Amanda. When we stand up, let's let's do a group hug. <laughs> I need it. <laughs> group hug. Mm. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs>